Hi guys, Olive here. Today, I really need your help. So here's the situation. Over the past couple of years, if you've been around this channel for any length of time, you may have noticed that I'm kind of going back into predominantly reading nonfiction as opposed to fiction. I still like fiction. I still incorporate it into my reading diet, but it is not the majority of what I read anymore. Well, the problem is when I was curating the books on these bookshelves behind me, it was during a time when I was reading a whole lot more fiction than I am right now. And now that I'm continuing to accumulate a lot of nonfiction books, I'm finding that I don't have a whole lot of an interest in a lot of the fiction books that are on my shelves. And very frequently, I get burned by fiction books. I don't want to keep them after I've read them or I regret buying them. So basically, the moral of the story is I want to clear a whole bunch of fiction off of my shelves to make space for all of the nonfiction that I'm continuing to buy. But as I was looking at the bookshelves behind me, particularly that far one over there, because that's where I keep my fiction, I was having a real problem trying to figure out which ones should stay and which ones I should sell to my local used bookstore for credits. Because obviously I bought all these books at some point in the past. So something about them appealed to me way back when, but I don't want to keep books if I know I'm not going to love them. There are certain books on my shelves that I know I have every intention of reading, but there are a bunch that I don't know if it's worth keeping them around. And that's where you come in. This is going to be the start of a new project here on this channel, which is always very exciting. I love a good project, but in this series of videos that I'm going to do over the next, who knows how many weeks, I'm going to go shelf by shelf on this far bookshelf behind me. There are five shelves of fiction, so there will be five total videos. And I'm gonna show you all the books that are on that shelf. I'll tell you what I know about them. If I do know anything, I'll tell you whether or not I currently intend to read them. And then I want your opinions. Even if you're normally a lurker, I ask you to please at least temporarily come out of lurking because I need your opinions on these books. If I don't currently have a strong motivation to read one of these books, then I need to know whether or not it's worth reading and worth keeping around. So if you loved it, I want to hear it and I want to hear about why, if only just because that's fun. But if you hated it, meaning that that book has been living on my shelves rent free for the past God knows how many years, I want to know that as well. A lot of you have been here with me on this channel for a number of years, which is so nice. Thank you so much for sticking around. But that means that you might know a little bit about my taste at this point. So if you read one of these books and you think I will absolutely hate it, please tell me I can take it. Just to be clear, I don't want this project to send a message that I'm done reading fiction because that's not true. I still want to read fiction. I think I actually want to keep my ratio where it is right now, where I'm just reading mainly nonfiction, but I still do pick up a good amount of fiction books. I like where it's at right now, but I do prefer owning nonfiction over fiction because I'm more frequently let down by the fiction books that I read. And I normally don't want to reread the fiction books that I pick up. And that's really the only reason I would keep a book around after I've already read it. So I'm finding that as soon as I read some of these fiction books, I then get rid of it. I've also kind of made the transition to eBooks and I get a lot of them for my library. If I read a fiction book that I absolutely love, I can just go out and buy a copy to keep on a favorites shelf if I feel like I want to have the physical copy around. There's really no reason for me to have all of this fiction if I'm not reaching for it. And also it's kind of my long-term goal that I would like to either read or get rid of the majority of fiction books on that far shelf and then take all of these books off, reorganize them, and then do a bookshelf tour. I have not done a bookshelf tour since I think 2016. So I'm kind of overdue for a new one. So for this first video in the series, I have pulled all of the books off of the top shelf from this far bookcase behind me. It's out of frame, so you can't see it. But by my count, there were 27 books on that shelf which is horrifying to think about if one shelf holds 27 books, and these are pretty big books, so I'm sure the other shelves have more. If that one had 27 books, then how many books do I own total? I've never been brave enough to count. But let's take a look at those 27 books. I need you to help me decide which ones are definitely staying and which ones can get the boot. 
Okay, this first one is by Steve Martin, as in the comedian Steve Martin, a very multi-talented man. It's called An Object of Beauty. And I remember I picked this one up because it has something to do with the art worlds. And I really love reading anything to do with the art world, even though I don't really understand art. But also, I remember that this book has something to do with St. Petersburg, Russia. In case you don't know this about me, I studied abroad there when I was in college. I absolutely loved it. It's one of my favorite places in the entire world. So any book that even mentions that it has something to do with St. Petersburg, that's reason enough for me to pick it up. But I don't remember hearing anyone talk about this book, not on Bookstagram, not on Booktube, not even on Goodreads nowhere. So I don't know about this one. Okay, this next one, I definitely think I'm going to keep because this is one of the few books that I bought new. Just as a side note here, most of the books that you will see during this project, I got at library book sales or I got them used. Some of them only cost a dollar. So I'm not flushing money down the toilet by getting rid of some of these. It's not like I have a ton of money invested in some of these. But this next one, I did buy new and I special ordered it on Book Depository because I couldn't find it anywhere in the US. It's called A Station on the Path to Somewhere Better by Benjamin Wood. And I bought this because his previous book, The Ecliptic, it was my my favorite novel of 2016. It was such a mind bending book. And I still think about it all the time. So I wanted to read his newest book, obviously not very urgently because it's sitting on my shelves still unread. But this one is about a young man and his estranged father and they take a road trip together for some reason. But I really need to read this one. So this one's going to stay. Oh, this next one is another one I picked up because I liked a book that the author had previously written. This is Why We Came to the City by Christopher Jansma. His book, The Unchangeable Spots of Leopards, is another one I loved in 2016. I actually think it was my second favorite of 2016. Wow, it is very appropriate that these two sit together, sit next to each other on my shelves because they're so similar. But this one takes place in 2008 in New York City. I don't know that I'm going to love it quite as much as The Unchangeable Spots of Leopards. That book is another mind bender. It was so weird and so specific, but I loved it. So I don't know if this one can live up to that, but I still want to read it. So this one stays too. Okay, now we start moving into the books that I feel a little bit more unsure about, starting with Lovers at the Chameleon Club, Paris 1932 by Francine Prose. Every single time I see this on my shelves, I can't help but think that this author changed her last name because how perfect is it that she's an author and her last name is Prose? But I digress. The plot of this book starts in the 1920s in Paris at a jazz club, but then obviously moves into the 1930s since 1932 is right there in the title. I don't even have to think about why I picked this book up. I love jazz music and anything jazzy, I will pick up sight unseen. But over the past couple of years, I've been let down by jazzy books, which is so heartbreaking. But that makes me think I might not love some of these jazzy books as much as I originally thought I would. So I don't know about this one either. Another jazzy one, Studio St. X by Ania Sato. This one takes place in the 1940s. I have no idea if that's an indication that I'll like it more or less than any other jazzy novel. But if we're talking about the 1940s, then we're talking about World War II, which typically isn't my cup of tea. It's not that I won't read anything from that time period or about World War II. I just tend to shy away from it. So I don't know. Maybe I'll love it. Maybe it'll betray me. Oh, this one I'm definitely keeping. The Blues Walked In by Kathleen George. This is about a jazz singer and it's set in Pittsburgh, written by a local Pittsburgh author, which is why I bought it brand new to support her. I'm definitely reading this one. It's just a matter of when. Okay, this next one is the start of a fantasy series. I do not own a lot of fantasy books just because I don't read a ton of it. But this is An Alchemy of Masks and Mirrors by Curtis Craddock. And I know this series is about a princess being protected by a musketeer. I would say I haven't heard a whole lot about this book, but that's not really all that surprising because I don't follow a whole lot of 
bookstagrammers, booktubers who focus on fantasy, just because that's not the majority of what I read. So I really am not in the loop when it comes to the new books and what people think about them. So if none of you have read this one, I might have to do some research and see if this series is good as a whole, if this book is worth reading, and if it's worth spending time reading a whole series. And as I'm saying, I don't read a ton of fantasy books. I'm seeing that there were more fantasy books on this shelf, including another start of a fantasy series Johann's Cabal, The Fear Institute. I think this is the first book in a series. Of course, they never make it clear because they want you to buy it regardless of what book in the series it is. Ignore my rant there. <laughs> this one I think has necromancy and a world formed by dreams. It certainly sounds intriguing. There is definitely a reason I picked this up in the first place, but I'm thinking total, I'm only going to keep around maybe three to four fantasy books in my entire collection, because I just don't reach for it very much. Another fantasy book, this is The Eternophiles by Leanna Renee Heber. This book is set in the Victorian era, which is almost certainly why I picked it up. And it follows a secret society who is attempting to figure out how to bestow immortality on selected national leaders. I know one of you must have read this. Let me know what you thought of it. Oh man, this one. Okay, this one is Witches and Warlocks, Tales of Black Magic, Old and New, edited by Marvin Kaye. And this was such a find when I found it at a used bookstore. I knew I had to have it. I love the way it looks. I was so interested in reading it when I bought it. But I know myself and I know that I'm typically not very motivated to read short story collections, new collections or older collections like this one. I just don't reach for them. I have a really hard time getting into stories, like even at the start of a novel, it takes me a while to get into it. So when I read a short story, by the time I'm into it, it's over. And then I have to start what feels like kind of a grueling process all over again. So I don't really like short stories. But then I also don't want to get rid of this, even if I don't want to read it, which sounds like such a waste of shelf space. But I don't know if any of you have read this. It is older and it's more obscure. But if you have, please let me know. Or if you just have opinions on whether or not I should keep it just because it's beautiful and I love it, let me know that too. From fantasy to thriller, I also have Dare Me by Megan Abbott. I've never read any of Megan Abbott's books. I first heard about her on the Book Riot podcast. I was listening to that very frequently when I was first getting back into reading in like 2014. And I remember them talking about her and it sounded like her books were just absolutely spectacular. But I still have never read anything by her. So when I saw this one, either at a used bookstore or a library book sale, I'm not seeing any library stamps. So it must have been a used bookstore. I figured I would start with this one. It's all about cheerleaders. I really like teen movies. So I thought that would be a good place to start. But I don't know, maybe I'll love it. Maybe I'll hate it. Okay, this next one, I really don't think I can bring myself to get rid of even if it's not very good because it's The Cauliflower by Nicola Barker. And if you've been around this channel for a long period of time, this spine might look very familiar to you. <laughs> this book was featured very prominently on the shelves behind me when we lived in our previous apartment. And I got so many comments about this book spine. It got so much attention. People wanted to know what is that book? Is it any good? <laughs> is it really called The Cauliflower? <laughs> so I've never read it. I never ended up picking it up. It's about a 19th century Hindu saint. And I probably should finally read it. It feels like kind of an icon here on this channel. But then I'm worried, what if I don't like it and I don't want to keep it? I feel like I just can't get rid of it and I don't want to dislike it. So I don't know, but I'm definitely going to keep this. This next book, I, without exaggeration, have seen at every single library book sale I have ever been to. Without fail, there is always a copy of this book on offer. So at one of them, I don't remember which one, I ended up getting it for myself. It's called Empress by Sean Saw. This is about Empress Wu, who was China's first and only female emperor. And I think I've been hesitant to pick it up because I can't decide whether it's a good thing or a bad thing that I've seen this at that many book sales. Does it mean that this book was super popular when it came out and then everyone just read it and eventually decided to donate their copy? Or has everyone who's ever picked this up 
not enjoyed it. And that's why they've gotten rid of it. I can't decide. So let me know what you think. Okay, this next one I'm definitely keeping. I don't know why I haven't picked this book up yet. This series is going to give me some good motivation to actually read the books that I own. But this is called Crescent by Diana Abu Jaber. This one is all about the chef at a Lebanese restaurant falling in love with an Arabic literature professor. It's a foodie romance. I have to read it. This is definitely saying. This one I remember seeing at the library book sale where I bought it and just thinking, ooh, it's so shiny. <laughs> it's called Bombay Ice by Leslie Forbes. This book is all about a young woman who leaves London to move back to India. But then when she gets there, she has to deal with the aftermath of a murder. I think I still want to read this one, but I don't know. It is gorgeous though. This next one is one that I think I might still want to read, but I'm still undecided. It's called In the Walled Gardens by Anahita Farouz. This is set in Iran and the main characters knew and loved each other as children and then they meet again later on in life. This next book, I have a whole lot more interest in reading for reasons that will become clear as soon as I show you the book. It is The Revolution of Marina M by Janet Fitch. This book is historical fiction set in Russia during the revolution, which just so happens to be my favorite time period within Russian history. But the reviews of this one have been very mixed. My friend Sabrina from Bookish Sabrina, she DNF'd this book when she loves Janet Fitch's other book, White Oleander, which I still really need to read. I really trust Sabrina's opinions. We end up feeling very similarly about a lot of different books, actually. So if she DNF'd this one, I don't know that I'm going to like it. And it's enormous. I mean, that's a big time commitment to read a book like this. And if it's only mediocre, I don't know if it's worth it. But then it's historical fiction set in Russia during my favorite time period. I'm so torn about this one. Okay, this next one is also enormous, but I know that I'm going to read it. It's The Luminaries by Eleanor Catton. I know I'm going to read this one because it was on my late to the party books list that I'm slowly trying to work my way through so that I can not be on time to the party, but at least fashionably late. Everyone has said this is spectacular. So I definitely want to read this. And I would really like to watch the TV series, which I'm pretty sure is out. Is it out? And is it any good if it is out for any of you who've seen it? Okay, this one, I remember seeing very mixed reviews about this one on Goodreads, which aren't always trustworthy, but sometimes can lead you in sort of the right direction. They can form sort of a consensus about the book. This is also a very dirty cover. I need to clean this. Anyway, this is Admission by Jean Hanf Korlitz. You'll notice that there's a little bit of a theme for this top shelf. There are a ton of campus novels for whatever reason, but this one is obviously about an admissions officer at Princeton, I believe it is. No idea if it's actually good. Another campus novel, this is The Half Brother by Holly LaCroix. This one is all about a young man whose former flame starts dating his half brother. And then later on in all of their lives, they all end up back at that same boarding school where they once attended, except they're all teachers now. It sounds interesting, but I've really been let down by campus novels before, so who knows. Another campus novel, it's The Headmaster's Wife by Thomas Christopher Green. This one is all about the headmaster of a boarding school in New England. He's found wandering naked around Central Park, so the police bring him in, and then he starts telling his life story to the police. It sounds extra, but maybe it's good. And then this is the last of the campus novels, I swear. It's called Loner by Teddy Wayne. This book is all about a young man from more humble beginnings attending Harvard, where he becomes infatuated with a young woman who seems to be out of his league. I'm just going to go out and say it. I own too many campus novels, but I know they're not all going to be that great. So I think at least two, maybe even three, or maybe all four of these campus novels need to go, depending on your feedback and what my research tells me. So let me know what you think. I think it's obvious why this next one appealed to me. It's called The Body in the Bookcase by Katherine Hall Page. I love books about books and I love mysteries. So I'm sure this one seemed perfect at what was probably a library book sale. And that's why I bought it. But once again, I accidentally bought a book deep into the series. I think this is the ninth book in the Faith Fairchild series. And I've not read any of the previous books. 
And I normally wouldn't let that bother me, except I just recently had an experience reading cozy mystery books like right in the middle of the series, and I had some mixed results. So has anyone read any books in this series? Is it a good series? Can I start here? I need to know. Another book about books, or at least it looks like one, it's The Book of Speculation by Erica Swyler. This one actually seems like it's much more about the main character who's a librarian, whose family tree may or may not include cursed mermaids. That sounds spectacular, but then again, I've been burned by a very good sounding synopsis more times than I can count. Yet another book about books, I actually totally forgot that I owned this one. It's called The Secret of Lost Things by Sheridan Hay. And apparently it's about a young woman hunting down a missing Melville manuscript. This next one I have heard amazing things about. So I think I already know what the feedback is going to be, but I would still love to hear your thoughts. It's called People of the Book by Geraldine Brooks. The plot of this one revolves around a missing Hebrew manuscript, and apparently the story hops between continents. I'm actually pretty confident that I would enjoy this one. And then the final book from that top shelf that I really need to get your opinion on is Romancing Miss Bronte by Juliet Gale. This is historical fiction starring Charlotte Bronte. I love the Brontes. I definitely love Charlotte and all of the novels I've read of hers. So I guess I just need to know if this book does her justice. So those were all of the books from that top shelf, some of which I don't know whether or not I should keep. So I need you to help me decide, even if you don't normally comment, if you have opinions on any of these books, good, bad, in between, if you have any feelings about them, please let me know in the comment section below. I will consider it a personal favor if you come out of lurking to help me out. I really wanna get rid of books that aren't worthy of keeping around. I want some of my shelf space back and I really wanna have a nice good reorganization project. And then I wanna do a bookshelf tour. So it's for a good cause. <laughs> Any thoughts or opinions can go in the comment section below, but if you would like to keep up with what I'm reading and writing about right now, you can find me on various places around the internet, including Goodreads, some other places on social media. The links to everywhere you can find me will be in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.